Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we've got a very exciting video. We are going to put the 3080 Ti up against the 6900 XT in both Windows and in Linux and see which one comes out on top. I've been very excited for this video. I've been wanting to do it for a very long time, for about six months now, but I needed to wait until 3.18 patch released because there were going to be considerable performance increases and I didn't want to uh, do any benchmarking before the 3.18 release. Uh, then once 3.18 was released, I had to wait until the game was actually playable for consistent and long enough periods of time to be able to actually benchmark uh, Star Citizen here and get accurate runs. Uh, speaking of which, uh, how do we benchmark when there is no included benchmark in such a dynamic and uh, diverse uh, universe here? So uh, the test system is going to be my Ryzen uh, 5800X 3D with 32 gigs of uh, DDR4 memory at uh, 3600 mega transfers per second in a four stick configuration. So four sticks of eight gigabytes at uh, 3600 mega transfers per second and CL16 with uh, very tight tertiary timings. Uh, the 6900 XT is the reference model. The 3080 Ti is the gigabyte Aorus Master. The drivers that we were using for uh, Windows was, uh, I believe, the 23.3.1 for the AMD, and for the 3080 Ti, uh, I believe it was uh, 531.29 uh, for Windows. And for Linux, uh, for the AMD driver, it's going to be the kernel driver 5.19 and Mesa 22.5.2, uh, if I remember correctly. And for the NVIDIA 3080 Ti drivers, we were using the proprietary uh, 525. One of the problems that we had in a previous video where the 6900 XT with kernel 5.19 in Linux was stuck at 255 watts. And when I actually tried it in that last video, it was successful in increasing the watts to what I commanded it to be. However, since that video, I have not been successful in being able to increase the power limits on the 6900 XT in Linux. So during these benchmark runs, I was stuck at 255 watts. In Windows 10, the 6900 XT had no problems, of course, going to the 293 watts. And the 3080 Ti in both Windows and in Linux had no problem sucking down 370 watts. So benchmarking, how did we benchmark this when there is no built-in benchmark? I wanted it to be as close to realistic gameplay as possible uh, without exceeding a long period of time, uh, just for the sake of uh, time. The runs were done uh, in packs of five. So five runs on the 6900 XT in Windows, five runs on the 6900 XT in Linux, and the same for the 3080 Ti 5 runs each in Windows and in Linux. As you can see on the video here, we started out in the HAB on, on Crusader L1 Lagrange uh, Ambitious Dream. And we start out on floor five with the ship Cutlass Black already uh, retrieved into the hangar so that we wouldn't have to uh, have the inconsistency of having to deal with the ASOP terminals. So we would run into the elevator, run down to the hangars, and uh, jump into the Cutlass Black, and jump into the seat, and fly on off to the Shubin Mining Facility here on Daymar. Everything that I did, I did as best I could to do it exactly the same every time. I pushed the same buttons, I entered the door the same way, I would uh, exit the Cutlass Black the same way, uh, and I would try to do exactly everything exactly every time. Uh, it was pretty consistent on a few of the runs. Uh, the time recorded on, o on uh, MSI Afterburner or on Mango HUD for Linux uh, was a 704 seconds on one, and one was 704.4 seconds. So pretty consistent. 
So we would uh, fly to, like I said, Shubin Mining Facility here on Daymar, uh, jump out, run into the uh, blue building where you can call up your ground vehicles, uh, and we would just go and stand in front of and look at the uh, ASOP terminal. We wouldn't actually uh, call up any vehicles, but I just wanted to sit there and look at it for uh, a period of time. The then we would just jump right back into the Cutlass Black and fly back to uh, Ambitious Dream, Crusader L1 Lagrange. And when we would park the ship, before we landed, we would turn it back around uh, so that it's facing out the hangar again. And once we landed, we would shut off the engines and do any repairs or refueling or restocking that is necessary. Then jump out of the Cutlass Black and then run back up to the starting point on floor five of the Habs. And then that would uh, conclude that particular run and test. And again, uh, I was a little over 12 minutes, about 12 minutes and 10 seconds for each run. And it was uh, fairly consistent. So uh, I am confident in the numbers that we were able to get uh, because many of the numbers were absolutely identical from run to run. Uh, and so it was a very good uh, representation, I believe, of what these cards will do. All right, so enough me blabbing. I know you want me to get to it. I want to get to it. How did these two cards perform? All right, here we go. In Linux on the 6900 XT, we, again, we're limited to 255 watts, and uh, the 3080 Ti had no problems getting up to 370 watts. And on the graph here, I need to make something perfectly clear the light blue top bar the ones with the highest fps in linux that is just the 97th percentile fps not the max in windows the light blue is the max fps the uh way mango hud uh was recording the and logging the performance uh it was just a 97th percentile and not the max but the other ones were identical for average fps and for one percent lows and 0.1 percent lows I can tell you this, that on the 6900 XT, its max FPS that I saw often was about 201 uh, frames per second in Linux. So about six frames per second higher than the Windows 10 at 195 for max uh, FPS on 3080 Ti. For the averages, the 6900 XT, 102 in Linux, but a very poor showing down in Windows 10 at only 89 frames per second. The average for the 3080 Ti in Windows 10, 102 frames per second, but a little bit more poor of a showing in Linux at 94 frames per second. Uh, the 1% lows and 0.1% lows uh, were very consistent, uh, where Linux was a little bit better uh, than Windows. And uh, again, as you can see, they're uh, pretty even, except for the 0.1% lows, where they're about half of the Linux 0.1% lows. And here's the dilemma. Which one do I use? Which one is uh, going to be my daily driver? Is it going to be the 6900 XT or is it going to be the 3080 Ti? I have to admit, the 3080 Ti render and what it looks like actually on screen, I preferred the uh, NVIDIA 3080 Ti over the 6900 XT. 6900 XT still looked good, but I did prefer the render of the uh, NVIDIA card. However, do I prefer it at 120 watts more than uh, the 6900 XT? I'm not so sure, especially when it's summertime and uh, I don't want to turn the office here into a sauna. So uh, there we go. The 6900 XT definitely comes out on top in Linux, but in Windows 10, the 3080 Ti definitely comes out on top. And they are absolutely identical when it comes to their native habitat, meaning you know the AMD card in the native Linux uh, being identical to the 3080 Ti in uh, Windows. So sound off in the comments below, which one would you choose? Would you choose the 6900 XT or the 3080 Ti for your daily driver and running Star Citizen? And uh, let me know. And then also uh, keep checking back because we will revisit these performance numbers 
when the 7800X3D uh, comes out here in a couple of weeks. So stay tuned, and uh, we'll see you in the verse.